This is kind of good movie my friends and it's called Flight. The main role was played by Denzel Washington so his character is this airline captain so this captain and his crew they faced with a major problem during the their flight so they have a they had a critical malfunction caused this uh, aircraft to lose control so what they did they invert the airplane temporary and just before the landing they put it back on to the normal flight so the risk of this maneuver of course it was high but in the, in the end they saved lots of people on board of course that's the hollywood fiction but in real life pilots also take risks not only during the emergency situations the risk is part of our daily life daily job you want to know why you'll have the answer in this video hello my friends and welcome my name is dennis and i'm boeing 737 captain let's go bum, bum. First, I want you to understand that the life without risks is not possible. So no matter where you travel, no matter where you stay, you will always face the risks. The risks for your health and the risks from environmental factors and from internal factors from your body. But you can minimize those risks, reducing their influence on your personality. That is what we do as a pilot. That is what all aviation system does to minimize the risk for the passengers, for the crew, for everyone. Let me show you first the difference between the risk and the hazard. I have took quite popular model and I'm not good at drawing so this guy is you. And let's say you want to swim in the ocean. Yes, you can go and swim. So you are on the surface now at the shore and you want to swim there. That's the waves. And there is the hazard in the ocean. Probably you know about it. There's a shark. Let's say that that's the fin of the shark. It's not the airplane fin. So if you go, if you change the environment, you will put yourself to the risk. So this is the hazard. This is the hazard. Hazard. And if you put yourself close to the hazard, then the hazard have likelihood to harm you. It is the risk. So probably you need to go somewhere. You need to swim across the, let's say, a river with a shark or a lake with a shark to reach, let's say, money. Would you risk it? Depends on money, of course, because the probability of the shark to actually harm you, to eat you, is quite low, probably. You don't know if they fed the shark before so if you know that the shark is not hungry, probably, probably you'll reach your money. If you know that the shark will harm you for sure, doesn't matter how much money you can get, you'll never cross this lake. So are you sure that you don't want to cross this lake because of the profit? But I'm sure that you will cross this lake. And let's see why. I drawn here one more guy and he has machine gun in his hands and he just say to you cross this lake or I'll shoot you very simple isn't it so now you have greater risk here it's only almost 100% probability of being killed but there is the probability of shark actually attack you well the lake is small the probability is lower. Agree. I hope you agree with me. So the shark may be hungry. It may not be hungry. We don't know for sure. So it may, you may wait for it to go away a little bit further. You may jump so you can minimize this risk somehow. So if you have 100, almost 100 probability of the high, so that's your highest risk possible to lose your life try to find the other possible case so in this case of course 
it's better to cross the lake to save your life and get the money of course pam pam one more example my friends this time you are a captain and you fly this beautiful airplane somewhere at the cruising flight level of 360 and you are going to descend because this is your destination airport at elevation of 2000 feet with the runway lengths 3600 meters which is quite long but suddenly the air traffic controller calls you and says captain we have the information that you have the bomb on board we're almost sure about it but we have not proved information that probably your bomb will explode and you descend through 4000 feet at this time let's admit that you cannot divert to your alternate airport let's say your luck and feel but you have the other airport mainly used by turboprops like ATRs or Dash Q400s so it has the short runway of 1500 meters but it has the elevation of 6000 feet so we have the information that the airplane would probably explode passing 4000 so this airport from the elevation perspective is more safe for you but you calculate your uh, landing distance and you discover that your landing distance required is around 2000 meters let's say not 2000 but 1800 is the maximum auto brake maximum reverse etc so you are you flying heavy jet you're able to stop somewhere here so then you cross the runway actually here the probability of explosion we don't know for sure whether it's it will explode or not but this airport has a long runway you fly there quite often and here is the short runway your required landing distance is longer than the runway itself so we'll probably overrun so we have risks here and risks here so which one would you choose yes and i will put the names airport a and airport b so write in the comment section which airport is more safe for you airport a or airport b tell me right now in the comment section done let's go so here my friends you have let's say almost 100 percent almost 100 let's say 90 percent that you probably have the bomb on board so they say they're almost sure that you have bomb on board but they don't know whether you have uh, explosion at 400 feet they don't know what may trigger the explosion but they heard from uh, not uh, approved source so some rumors that it it may explode at 4000 feet so we have 50 50 percent of this explosion but here's a nice runway here you will not explode for sure but the short runway i would choose this one and this is the proper answer so you need to choose the short runway but why i will explain it because this risk you cannot control so you will explode explode and that will bring you to catastrophic outcome so everyone on board will die it's not good here even if you overrun the risks of being dead is quite low because you can let's say you calculate your landing distance for vrf plus five but you can maintain almost all speed to land here so you can reduce your speed down to stick shaker and let their stick shaker let's say and also you cannot you may not follow the standard glide slope so you can descend lower so you, ne you need to cross uh, not at 50 feet but you may descend lower let's say you may cross the runway edge at 10 feet and that will reduce your landing distance of course you may use the emergency brakes if you have on your airplane and you need to check whether this airport has the stopway stopway is usually used for rejected takeoff distance calculations the acceleration stop distance available here the landing distance does not include this uh, area so we need to call okay i need this i need to know whether the stop distance stop area is available for that runway pam pam
Who, my friends? I'm not good in English, so if I'm talking, talking continuously, I think, I talk, I breathe, so I have a heavy breath, then I talk too much. Oh, yes, so we need to choose this airport for your landing because the risks here are uncontrollable. Here, you need to control, you can control your risks. So probably, yes, you excurred the runway, but the probability of everyone dying in this case is lower compared to this case. And this risk you cannot control. There is a table, I'll put it to the screen. So, uh, risk assessment matrix. Uh, on the top, we have uh, the likelihood of hazardous event occurring. On the left, we have here uh, the severity uh, the severity of injuries or something like this the severity so we have on the left part the catastrophic then we have the major uh, the major severity and moderate so of course if the you have the bomb on board it has the probability to explode you have the catastrophic risks and on the top we have where it likely to happen and likely to happen so you have some somewhere in the middle yes because you don't know uh, whether you, you will explode past 4000 so the possibility could happen here and we go that your risk is very high or maybe even critical but if you will overrun the runway, you can do everything not to overrun the runway. You can you cannot follow. You may not follow the standard procedures. Procedures. So as I told you, you may descend lower. You may reduce the speed lower. You may even use the reverse in flight, speed brakes in flight before landing. So you can almost crash landed your airplane with severe G force. But you can stop your airplane for that runway. Believe me at least for Boeing 737 and of course even if you overrun you will not have the catastrophic outcome for everyone on board I will consider this risk as major so we have major on the left and the possibility that it could happen is probably possibly could happen yes the same probability and that will bring us to moderate so we put our situation from high risk or even critical risk to moderate risk and what we have here in the green, we have very low risks. You see the minor and very unlikely to happen. Let's go to the left corner here in the bottom. We have very low risks to happen. So during our usual flights, we need to keep ourselves there. So we need to keep the lower risk possible. So if you check the weather, you see some thunderstorms, you may take extra fuel to minimize the risk going to these thunderstorms. You need to avoid them and land safely. Also, if you check other situations like fog, you also may take the different airport, the different unturned airport. So the safety is very, the risk management is very important for aviation. As you may see, my friends, the risk management is the part of decision making. So you may fly your aircraft perfectly well and that will make you a good pilot. But only proper risk management and decision making will make you a good captain. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like it if you like, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell, whatever it means. I hope you enjoyed this, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great time my friends more videos to come bye bye pam pam